Welcome back. In this part, we will generate moves for the remaining three pieces. The pawn, the knight and the king. I'll just close all of my open tabs. And then let's start in the pawn class. Pawns always move toward the opponent's side of the board. They can move one position forward or two the first time they move. But they cannot capture like this. So if there's a piece in the way, a pawn cannot move forward. Pawns can also move one position diagonally, but only if doing so captures an opponent piece. There are also some special moves that pawns can make, but we'll handle them later. First, we add a direction variable called forward. In the constructor, we check if the pawn is white. In this case, for what is the up or north direction. Otherwise, if the color is black, Forward is the down or south direction. Next, we add a helper method called can move to. It returns true if and only if the pawn can move forward into the given position. So it must be inside the board. And it must be empty. Now we can add a similar method called can capture at. It returns true if the pawn can move diagonally into the given position. If the position is not inside the board, or it is empty, then a capture cannot be made there. Otherwise, if the position does contain a piece, it can be captured only if it belongs to the opponent. Note that I've made can move to static. This is not required, but I'll do it whenever a method does not access any instance members. Okay, now let's add a method called forward moves. It returns all forward or non-capturing moves the pawn can make. There may be more than one such move because pawns can advance two squares the first time they move. We begin by creating the position immediately in front of the pawn. I'll call it one move position. Next, we check if the pawn can move there. If so, we create a normal move, which moves the pawn to that position.
and then we should check if the pawn can move one more square forwards. So we create a position called two moves position. The pawn can only move there if it hasn't moved before. And can move to returns true. For now, we will use our normal move class for this double move. However, this will change in a future part where we handle capturing on passant. Okay, that was the forward moves. Now we create a similar method for diagonal moves. Here we loop over two directions, west and east. For each of them, we create a position called two. This position is diagonally in front of the pawn, either on the left or right hand side, depending on the direction. Next, we check if the pawn can capture a piece at that position. If so, we yield return a normal move, which moves it there. Finally, we can implement get moves. It returns the legal forward moves. Concatenated with the legal diagonal moves. And that's it for now, but we will come back here later and implement pawn promotion and capturing on passant. Let's handle the knight next. This piece moves two steps horizontally and one step vertically, or vice versa. The knight is also the only piece that can jump. So even if it's surrounded, it's still able to move. We start by writing a helper method called potential two positions. As the name suggests, it returns all positions where the knight can potentially move. We implement that using an outer loop which iterates over the vertical directions. And an inner loop which iterates over the horizontal directions. In the body, we yield return from plus two times the vertical direction, plus
plus the horizontal direction. And also the other way around. This gives us all eight potential positions the knight can move to. Now we can write a method called move positions. It will return only the positions where the knight is actually allowed to move. To do this, we call potential two positions and then use the where method to keep only the legal ones. The position must be inside the board. And it must either be empty or contain an opponent piece. Great. Now we can easily write get moves. It just has to call move positions. And then use select to create the moves. That's it for the night. The last piece we need to handle is the king. This piece can move in all directions just like the queen, but only one step. It's also involved in castling, but we'll handle that in a later part. For now, let's create a static array containing all the directions. Next, we'll add a move positions method. It loops through the directions. For each of them, we take a single step from the king's current position if that position is outside the board we immediately continue to the next otherwise, the king can move there if the square is empty or it contains an opponent piece.
Finally, we can write get moves. It just loops through the legal move positions. and returns a normal move for each of them. I'm not using the select function because we will add casting moves here later. Perfect. We've now implemented all normal moves for every chess piece. Let's open the game state class and make these moves usable. First, we need a public method called legal moves for peace. It takes a position as parameter and returns all moves the piece at that position can make. First of all, if the position is empty, or it contains a piece that doesn't belong to the current player. Then there are no legal moves. Otherwise, we get the piece at the given position and return all the moves it can make. Ok, now we can ask the game state which moves are legal for a certain piece. Note that we pass the position of the piece to get moves. That's required because the piece itself doesn't know where it is. We also need a way to execute the move that the user picks. For that, let's create a makeMove method which takes a move as parameter. For now, it will just call the moves execute method passing in the board. And then change the current player. Note that I'm not verifying if the move here is legal. That's not necessary because we will always call it with one of the moves returned by legal moves for peace. Ok, that's it for this part. Next time we will take a big step towards making the game playable. In the UI project, we will allow the user to choose and execute a move. See you next time.